Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 134 where you send me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net that's m-s-a-r-g-e-n-t 23 at comcast.net and I will do my best to answer them and we had a whole bunch so let's get right to it. This one's called X Flat Earther, letter X, not an EX. Hi, Mark, I used to believe in Flat Earth when I was around five years old. Then I learned that it is round in school and still couldn't believe that until I learned about gravity because then it made sense. I've seen the Flat Earth model. Please explain to me, period. On Earth, night and day exist simultaneously on a global time scale in round Earth theory based on the Flat Earth model. How can nice, well... Night and day exist simultaneously with those two lights representing sun and moon and sky. They are both visible all way, <laughs> all way. I'm not, I'm not correcting this one. In flat earth model, even if the sun was a spotlight, so height in the sky, it would still be visible. Please explain sun rise and sunset in flat earth model. Why can't see other countries while looking through the telescope over the Atlantic? Oh, wow. This kid is in basic mode. All I see is see all away. The more I think about it, the more Flat Earth makes less sense to me, and I would like to make sense of the theory. That's from K. Anthony. K. Anthony, you got some homework to do. I would highly recommend uh, two recent videos by Karen B. and DITRH, otherwise known as Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole, which discuss the sun in great detail. Uh, that's what I would look up first. Uh, this one's called, well, it's perfectly safe to say, Mark Sargent was right regarding Logan Paul. Love you, Mark. And that's from Sherry Mitchell out in Colorado. Thank you for that. And again, uh, the Logan Paul thing, I, look, I'm just glad I was vindicated for the community's sake uh, because I didn't want this. What the, my biggest fear there was, and I don't want to drag this out, was I didn't want him to all of a sudden try to represent flat earth and be interviewed about it because he has the intelligence level of a loaf of bread Ugh, seriously i mean but it shouldn't surprise anybody so you give uh, an eighth grader uh money and positive reinforcement because you're pulling pranks on people with terrible parental supervision what do you think is going to happen to him uh, this one's called Throne of God Paper. Mark, I would like a copy of the Throne of God Paper and the Prepper's Guide, please and thank you. That's from David. Very welcome. This one's called Open Science Solutions, uh, and it's a link to a video. It's called Open Science Solutions for Crisis of Science. It's on YouTube, so look that up if you get a chance. That's from Gerald. Thank you, Gerald, for sending that. He didn't send any text with it. This one's called a face to go with the voice oh yeah it's from ray goodwood uh hey mark Sargent, i'd like to say hi from 1999 ray goodwood retired usda surveyor twice a guest on mark Sargent's flat earth tfr show uh ex semi pro race car driver always good enough to be hired where there weren't many rides drove for four or five teams stabled in three or four states competed on a regional scale awarded rookie of the year won a track championship Total of 31 main event wins in eight seasons, for what it's worth. Yeah, cool. You know what? He looks like a race car driver, too, from back in the day. That's really, really cool. Awesome. Thanks, Ray. He's part of the uh, subject matter expert list. If you guys want to check that out, the, just look up the uh, testimony shows by subject matter experts. That is uh, a YouTube playlist that I have on my channel. This one's called Flat Earth Expedition. Hi, Mark. My name is... Arbnor Sadria, and I am from Sweden. I saw, so I probably just butchered that pronunciation. Sorry about that. I saw the documentary on Netflix and it intrigued me. I have an idea. Why not get the Flat Earth community to raise money for an expedition? Hey, there's a novel idea. Let us go buy a boat or plane around the Earth, and if we come back to the same spot we started, I'm assuming we don't hit an ice wall, then we can prove what shape the Earth is once and for all. Well, not so fast. Meaning... If you take a boat or a plane and you come back to the same part, you could be on a flat surface as well. Because remember, if you run your circle, uh, run your finger around a, a dinner plate in a circular manner, uh, you circumnavigated the dinner plate. But does that make the dinner plate a ball, a sphere, a globe? No, it does not. Uh, let's see. Uh, and oh, yes, almost forgot the expedition should be live streamed for the entire expedition. Please give your thoughts on this idea. I just did. Uh, you're going to have to think a little harder than that because we've been thinking about that one for a long time. 
This one's called Idea. Hi, Mark. I hope you are doing well. I have an idea for people who want to interview you and ask you how you got into the flat earth. Why don't you record a 10 minute video with the main info and send it to them so you do not need to repeat yourself? Keep it flat, Alma. Uh, yeah, you know what, Alma? It's that's not a terrible idea, except that, look, part of the thing, part of doing interviews is just saying the same things over and over, being repetitive, repeating yourself, being re redundant. Um, it's just because everyone asks the same questions. Look, they're not going to answer, uh, they're not going to ask unique questions every time. Uh, in fact, I'd love to get some new questions every once in a while. But it's just part of the thing. People will ask, how'd you get into it? How'd you get into it? And I've, I've done that routine hundreds of times now. So, sorry. This one's called Russians and Other Enemies. Mark, for years we have been fed propaganda by the mainstream that we have enemies such as North Korea, China, and Russia. But here we are with such an intertwined economy and world that uh, a full-on World War III could never happen. Thanks for helping to open eyes and showing the world for what it truly is. And that's from Arthur Morgan. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, China is probably our biggest trade partner right now. And the Soviet Union never squared off with the United States, the exception of movies like Red Dawn. Uh, North Korea, what are they going to do? There, there's nobody. I mean, we're not necessarily a trade partner with them. But uh, it, yeah, the, it's such a it's such a world inter integrated economy that uh, World War Three would take out everybody it would take out every industrialized nation, whether they decide to fight in the war or not. So who is our real enemy? Eh, sometimes you got to make them up just to give the public something to do, apparently. This one's called Some Questions About Flat Earth. Hi, Mark. It took me a while to find the email address. How would it take you a while? My email address is literally in the description box of every single video I have, and there's 1,500 of them out there. Uh, the questions on the YouTube channel. So here is the copy and paste job. Hi, Mark. Not really familiar with all the flat earth principles. The earth is flat, and what we see in heaven above us is just like a giant max screen, a bit like 3D. Oh, a giant IMAX screen. 3D uh, through globe fooling us, we see the universe. The outside of the flat earth is actually what we see on a globe as the South Pole. I have a few questions. Having a flat earth with an outside perimeter, is there a thickness of the flat earth? No, no, there is not because the deepest hole ever drilled is only eight miles. So take your, take your pick after that. Uh, when we walk on the outside perimeter where the edge is, does it touch the IMAX screen or is there a gap? I doubt if there's a gap. Uh, I highly believe that this place is a sealed container, uh, which also would kind of go along with the whole air pressure thing. Um, can you fall off the flat earth? No, of course not. Like people said hundreds of years ago. No, that's why. They, I mean, people hundreds of years ago made up all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, but no, you can't fall off the flat earth. We have the air above the surface. Is that going all the way up to the giant IMAX screen and what is on the other side of the IMAX screen. Yes, the atmosphere, uh, well, I mean, it gets less and less as you get up there. What's on the other uh, side? Take your pick. I'd like to think it's an unlimited universe uh, because this particular world that we're, we're in is 99.9% .9 conflict. Is there a max distance between the flat earth surface and the IMAX screen like a thousand kilometers or so? Uh, don't know. Don't know. Uh, I mean, take your pick. I, I would say it's minimum 500 kilometers and maximum, let's say, 3,000 kilometers. That's my guess. Uh, how is the universe image being projected to the IMAX screen from the outside or from the surface side of the flat Earth? Uh, I don't think it's being projected from down here. I think it's being, uh, uh, it's part of the screen. I mean, you gotta remember, HD technology, we've only had that for like 20 years. Imagine what you could do in a thousand years. Um, does the flat earth also rotate? I doubt it uh, because you would see some sort of gravitational forces going uh, centrifugal at that point. And in a stationary position, unlike the round earth globe flying through the universe, uh, is there anything outside the flat earth? You already asked that. And if so, what's there? And had so many questions after seeing on Netflix, was thinking someone pulled a huge prank on us. Kind regards, Edward. Absolutely right. Moving on, this one's called Flat Earth Question. Mark, since you are a flat earther, I was watching your documentary on Netflix, and I have a question. Do you believe there are other planets besides Earth? I think there's other worlds besides Earth, but I don't think they're up there like Mars and Jupiter and Saturn and things like that. I think they're just, uh, though. I think those are just lights in the sky. Now, could there be other domed structures? Could there other be buildings outside of this place? Sure. Sure, why not? That's what I would do. I'd build a whole bunch of them. That's from Jordan Kenny. Thank you for that, Jordan. 
This one's called Video Games and the Human Condition. Uh, Mark, this guy's a genius artist from John Cummins. And the video is called Jonathan Blow, Video Games and the Human Condition. You know what? I may have to watch that. That sounds really, really cool. Thank you for that. That's going to be in my to-do list. This one's called The Ring. Hi, Mark. I'm watching your documentary, They Hide God. Uh, if you guys didn't know, the Flat Earth clues were also taken by other people, which is fine. Again, Creative Commons license. You can take the clues and do with them whatever you want. Uh, but several people um, <clears throat> put, them in, put them into a compilation, and they said, uh, they titled it, they didn't even put Flat Earth in the title. One was called They Hide God with the Greatest Lie Ever. One is called They Hide God with the Biggest Lie Ever. That's what this person just watched. Uh, let's see. I, too, would have scoffed not long ago. I couldn't believe you gave out your phone number, and I'm going to call you. I wasn't until you mentioned the ring and showed the Masonic symbol. On the cover of a book I published back in 2002, The Wicked Current, there is a small stick figure with one hand in the fire and the other pointing up to almost hidden words. A message. It doesn't show it, but on his finger is the original Mason ring. My husband Ray wrote the book after a series of paranormal events, and he started automatic writing. It, I was on my first and only podcast not long ago. If you search my name on YouTube, you'll find me on a show called Beyond the Strange. Hey, hey, I like it already. Took me that long to work up the nerve to even try something like that. Anyway, I'm on a search for answers. My husband died shortly after the book was published. There are at least three more books written with some pretty wild information. I'm currently in touch with Robert McCann, a scholar who wrote about King Arthur in America. He is interested in hearing what's written about that. So, as you can see, there's a lot going on the later writings. I looked up your area code and saw it was Colorado. I talk on occasion to Cody Snodgrass, Oklahoma City bombing whistleblower. He's out there as well. My husband Ray was involved in similar sorts of things back in the day. Anyway, I'm all over the map here. I'm an average person who works at a grocery store. Just changed jobs from working at a restaurant. Exciting, I know. Looking forward to speaking with you. All the best, Amy. Cool, Amy. And I don't know if I've talked to her yet. I get quite a few phone calls and uh, I can't answer most of them. This one's called Flat Earth Question. Hi, Mark. I know you get lots of emails and don't have time to see them all. But I have a question that I don't really know how to look up because I just don't know how to compact the question to a short enough sentence to Google. I would prefer just a quick write back instead of being read aloud uh, too late. But if you do want to answer it on your Q&A, I would prefer it to be anonymous. All right. I won't use your name. Question. I You didn't sign it anyway. Question. I understand not being able to go from the north to the south pole because of the earth being flat, but how would you explain the ability to go from North America to Asia directly going, I guess, the other way around, like not across Europe or Africa? I guess that's what I'm trying to convey. Uh, love you and all the other people in the community who give their time and energy into hard research and then teaching it to the rest of the flat earth. I'm 16. I live in Canada. I think it's extremely important to educate the next generation. Have a good day. Uh, okay, so your question is, uh, go from North America to Asia, directly going, I guess, the other way around. Why would you go the other way around? Take a flat earth map, pick your spot in North America, and then draw a line to Asia. And remember, North America, you can go one of two ways anyway. So take your pick and and let me know. And then and then look it up on Flight Tracker or you know book it on... Well, you know, don't book the flight, but do it on uh, Expedia or Priceline, and you'll see where the connection goes. That's the key here, which is look for where the connection goes to your destination, because it's probably not going to be a nonstop flight. And then see what, what it looks like on a flat map and compare it to a globe. You know what? I will also write this person back and say, I read this on Q&A 134. This one's called Another F.E. Pick. Hey, Mark, Sean Rose from Greenwood, Indiana. I just made another FE pick. I thought you might like it. Keep it flat. P.S. Walking out of the Denver conference due to Logan Paul's appearance sure has been vindicated. Thanks to his disgusting movie. Yeah, I usually sit through anything FE I can click on, but that one was by far the most difficult. Yeah, it was for me as well because 50 minutes to troll us. 
was a long time. Many of us, including myself, knew it would be a mockery. Allow me to de- dedicate this one-minute scene from the movie Papillion to Logan Paul. Here it is. Uh, and I will pause this for a second. Yeah, I just watched the clip, and it was about a minute and a half long. <laughs> Very interesting. Uh, Papillion, uh, the movie uh, P-A-P-I-L-L-O-N. Uh, it looked like it was Steve McQueen in there from 1973. Uh, where the court, this outside court, sort of a surreal scene, accused him of uh, the greatest crime of all, which was a wasted life. So, yeah, Logan Paul, uh, Grant, he just turned 24. So his life hasn't been completely wasted yet. He can he could turn around if, if he wanted to, uh, but he's not going to. Uh, I mean, maybe he'll, he'll run into some regret, but honestly, he's not going to learn anything until he suffers. So, and he has not really suffered yet. So we'll, we'll, we'll see how that, that works. Anyway, uh, thank you for that, uh, Sean. Good stuff. And uh, again, Logan, I, I was just grateful we dodged a bullet there, which was um, he didn't do anything on stage that was completely embarrassing to us. I mean, he, he said the line, uh, you know, of course it was a complete lie, but at least he made it sound sincere. I mean, honestly, he could have just peeled off all his clothes and ran around and, and made a mockery of us, which would have been way worse for morale. And he didn't. So, again, we lucked out for whatever reason. This one's called Australia to Brazil. Hi, Mark. I love all the work you have done on the FE and just watched your movie on Netflix. I am a true believer in the Flat Earth movement. I live in Australia, and I was wondering if you ever had someone go and record flights that take off from Australia or New Zealand that fly to direct Brazil. And have someone record their landing in Brazil is it's the only real thing that messes with my head. Cheers, David. Uh, no, I I haven't. Maybe somebody out there has. I mean, you can look it up. There might be somebody that, that posted on YouTube because people post everything. And that is Australia to Brazil flight. And you, you could watch it if it was a time lapse. And maybe, you know, type in Australia to Brazil time lapse and see if anyone's got anything unedited. Or if they do have a uh, strange little stopover, I'd love to know where that was. This one's called, Reports of Flat Earth Cruise to Antarctica are blatantly false, conference founder says. Mark, reports of a Flat Earth Cruise, um, yeah, same headline, and it's on News Hub, and we're getting so much traction on this. I don't know when exactly the media decide not to check their sources. They just figured, okay, if two or three other media places already are <clears throat> reporting on the story, even though it's false... We can report it too, and we're off the hook because other people did it before us. Uh, you know, the whole, if a million people jumped off a bridge, are you going to jump too? And the media now is, is doing this. I mean, it's great publicity for us, but the but of course the, the 2020 Antarctic a- expedition from the Flyers community is not real. It started out with just a 2020 cruise, uh, which is just a, a recreational cruise, a leisure cruise out of Miami. Uh, for the Flat Earth community. It was going to be the conference there, and I, hopefully it still happens. We'll see. Uh, but, in, heck, at this point, we may have to uh, uh, do, no matter what, do the cruise, just because it'll all these people will be going, oh, you're going to Antarctica? It's like no cruise ship leaves from Miami and goes to Antarctica. In fact, no ship goes to Antarctica. Cruise liners don't go down there uh, for obvious reasons, the first being icebergs. You need an icebreaker to, to go down there. And uh, I don't even want to get into it. But thank you for sending me that headline. I'm sure we'll get a lot more of those. This one's called No Manned Missions to Space Ever, period. And I prove it in this video. Hey, Mark, interesting video about rocket ships and sound decibels and the impossibility of manned space flights. And yeah, the video is called... I actually watched this. This was good. Uh, and I gave it a thumbs up. Uh, it's called No Man Missions to Space Ever, period. And I prove it in this video. It's from Veracity. And uh, it's fascinating. Uh, it goes, you know, the noise generated by a, a rocket. Sh- and some of these guys aren't even wearing helmets or or special hearing protectors. It should just rattle the the their bones to, like, dust. And, you know, they seem fine. They're talking to the mission control like there's like there's no noise at all. I do not think the rockets are soundproof. So thank you for that. This one's called... <laughs> this is probably the longest title ever. I didn't know you could squeeze this much into a title. My name... This is the title of the of the email. My name is Co Younger. I am a flat earther. I would like for people to consider the wind blows one way, but the clouds go the other way. I run a crane. I can see further than I should if we are on a ball. I live in the East Coast, North Carolina. I work in the forestry business. Trees gravitate towards the sun. If the world be round, why do trees lean in North Carolina to the west? 
and then the body of the email is actually shorter than the title. Mark, I think further south you go, they would lean to the east, but if the sun's 93 million miles away, why wouldn't they grow straight up the north side of my house? It never sees the sun. I have bats on the north side of my house. There's always a shadow there. I think if the earth was a ball, the sun should hit the end of my house sooner or later. <laughs> cool. Um, I'm, I, I kind of know where he's going with this. I just can't respond because uh, his, his mind is racing. And I, I just don't know how to respond to that. This one's called A Pensive Inquiry. Shalom, Mark Sargent. I don't get a lot of shaloms. Uh, the idea that the world is flat is not at all inconceivable and very appears to be consistent with the world of Yahweh. Yahweh? Yahweh. Uh, you, know, you know what I'm trying to say. Y-A-H-V-A-H. However, I would greatly appreciate if you could send me by email any article that you might have that explains the issues of, here we go, eclipses, day and night, and so on with a flat earth. Also, the matter of the South Pole. We are so used to explaining by way of the spherical world that we don't always know how to explain it in the flat earth model. And if you're able to link your findings to the support of scriptures, await your response, Desmond. You don't want much, do you? Come on, man. Do your own homework. Don't be lazy. There's tons and tons of combat uh, content out there for you. This one's called Last Tuesday's Strange World. Mark, hey, I just was wondering what happened to Last Tuesday's Strange World episode. I tried listening to it and it would not let me. It said uh, SME had done something and was not allowed in my country. Has America finally gone down for the count? No, no, no. I didn't hear you talk about it on the following FEOHP or Wednesday either. Okay, that's it. Keep it short since your email load has written, risen 137%. Uh, it's good. I don't know where you came up with 137%, but it's actually pretty close. Peace to you, and that's from William. Okay, so Strange World. Uh, if you were listening to it outside of the United States, and you're listening to it on a mobile phone, depending on where you are, there are some music selections that sometimes get blocked. And by that, what they do is they say, uh, you know, they'll, they'll. Normally, though, I haven't, I haven't gotten a blocked thing in a while. So uh, just check to see what, what they do is they, the, the, if the music is copyrighted, of course, the nickels go to whatever, whoever made the song, which is fine. Uh, but sometimes they will, because uh, music contracts are really, really varied. And there are some countries that, you know, they don't have the agreement. So SME may not have an agreement with your country regarding that song on mobile devices. But a laptop, I almost guarantee it'll work. So Sorry about that I, I i can't rip out and song rights change from time to time depending on if, if uh, a record company merges with another company or the band goes on tour again or a new agent gets an agency gets involved it's tough uh, so just try to try it on another device you'll you'll get it eventually this one's called what this one's called ethnography uh, let's see. Hello, Mark. My name is Garrett. I'm a student at Pacific University in Forest Grove, Oregon. I have a writing project where I'm supposed to explore a group. I'm very interested in the Flat Earth community and would really appreciate it during the next week where we could meet uh, or, or have a video interview. I think there would be no better person for me to talk than you. I'm sure you're very busy and your time is valuable, but my project is due in two weeks. I would be willing to drive to you if that worked for you. My spring break just started so I can work around your schedule. Hope this email reaches you well. With thanks, Garrett. I'm not going to give out his full name or his phone number or his email address. Uh, but yes, we did do the video interview. I didn't have him drive up here. It was a little bit of a haul from Oregon because I'm up uh, in Woodby Island. And uh, which is north of Seattle. You can look that up. W-H-I-D-B-E-Y. And uh, it went very well. So thank you for that, Garrett. This one's called, I want PDF, please. Many thanks, Damien. Uh, yes, of course, it'd be nice. If, you know, if you ask for the PDF, which one you want. So I, I'm, I'm guessing he wanted the uh, survival guide. So I sent him the survival guide, which is cool. This one's called Behind the Curve Review. Hi, Mark. I just finished Behind the Curve, inspired by watching several negative reactions from people in the Flat Earth community. My take, I thought it was terrific. It was beautifully filmed. I can't imagine seeing a more empath empathic, empath empathic, I think you mean em empathetic, 
whatever. And gentle documentary about Flat Earth than this one, excluding ones produced by Flat Earthers. There was genuine affection for you and Patricia, uh, though I doubt she feels that way. Patricia's monologue in her car was poignant and the best part for me, honest, questioning, and vulnerable. Other than the spaceman, the scientists were respectful and em em empathic. That You know what? We'll keep moving on. Uh, committing to do a better job explaining the world we live in and pledging to meet halfway to have a dialogue instead of shaming or demeaning flat earthers as crazy or unintelligent. Admittedly, Jaron took a metaphorical headshot at the end of the documentary, but he was also allowed to explain himself, albeit briefly. He has shown a little love. Uh, he was shown a little love for his laser test plan. Kind of. Kind of. Uh, Bob also suffer, suffered several kill shots, uh, but that can be expected whenever one climbs into the ring as the go-to science expert for a fringe cosmology. He was hurt financially, and I feel for him and his family. I hope he recovers even stronger. He shouldn't lose the ability to support himself over his beliefs. By way of full disclosure, I am most closely identified with the science writer who was fascinated by the movement and its truth claims while rejecting them entirely. Uh, kind regards, Duke. Uh, P.S. Periodic table bouncy ball guy was a riot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so again, the, I'm not slamming the documentary behind the curve. Uh, what I'm a little disappointed in was, and he wasn't alone in this, was when Daniel reacted. And most of you guys, if you watched the movie, you didn't see this because it was only in the director's commentary for the iTunes release, which was... Um, uh, his when we were at the conference in Raleigh and the 12 year old kid walked up to the microphone th that's when the film team took offense to it they wanted to uh, take a stance they, they felt a responsibility for the children I thought that was really really interesting I, I thought that was unique at the time but it wasn't uh, National Geographic also did that and other large podcasts you know a couple of the podcasts had millions of people and they said that in fact here's the th you want me this part that even bugged me more talk about hypocritical was that out of all people logan paul actually mentioned that in his behind the scenes little thing that he did uh, after his his film which was and he, he did it twice. One, when he was talking to Summer Lowen at the conference, he says, aren't you too young to be flat in flat earth, right? Which is fascinating. And then he, he, uh, he seemed uh, somewhat outraged that we were pushing this to children. And it's like, okay, first off, when you made your, when he went to the conference, he was 23, right? That is just a notch above being a kid. And second, his demographic is eighth grade boys. So where's this coming from? It's like, okay, it's fine for you to preach that inflicting pain and suffering on other people for money, that's fine. And then posting it on YouTube, that's absolutely fine. And, and I'm sorry, trolling uh, suicide victims in a forest in Japan where they take uh, death a lot more serious than we do, that, that's fine. But uh, preaching flat earth to somebody that's absolutely out of bounds that's you know again and he wasn't alone there the, the director of the of the documentary national geographic and and other big podcasts said the same thing it's like oh no no you shouldn't you know it's out, you're crossing the line there when you're going after kids it's like one well, we're not going after kids but i thought that was fascinating uh it's 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 definitely their hot button right now and i am going to keep pushing it all right this one's called youtube filtering problems gets backlash from users uh, Mark, okay to read on air. Good to know. It seems that YouTube filtering options being disabled is getting severe backlash. I can't imagine they will make this a permanent feature on the site because users are very upset. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Styx, S-T-Y-X, a popular goth-styled and very informed political commentator, states that we can no longer search for a term and filter by upload date, which you already know. Uh, for those who don't know about this problem and are interested to hear about the backlash and potential solutions that YouTube can implement, see the video at the bottom. Apparently, it was initiated to deal with the New Zealand situation do you agree with that or do you think fe was being targeted no i think that fb was being targeted no a false flag shooting uh whether it was false flag or not no the new zealand shooting has an effect on the largest american corporation uh or one of the largest american corporations no no of course not anyway would be interested to hear your thoughts and any ideas work uh work around this problem if we really want to see the latest fe content 
that was put out the same day or the same week. Please tell me uh, which QA number video you answer on this. Uh, thanks. The video is called, and you can watch it by at the 1 minute 18 seconds mark youtube persists in blocking upload date filtering non-priority content is crushed yeah yeah okay now the good news is and i'll put this in my to-do pile the good news is the filters are working again and i you know thank you if the uber nerds are, are listening to this or reading a transcript of this uh thank you for turning those back on because it was a really pain in the ass i mean it wasn't hurting me so much or any of the established youtubers but Anyone that was new, I mean, I, I think they only thought about this later. If you were new trying to get into YouTube and trying to make a, a, a new a channel with content, uh, good luck getting found if the filters aren't working because sometimes that's the only way. I mean, if you're sorting by week or by day, that's the only time you can ever see new channels that are trying to break into things. And if you don't do that, your YouTube is going to will eventually uh, wither and die. Because no one will want to make new content because it's never ever going to get seen. I mean, you'll have this massive negative reinforcement where someone will make a YouTube channel unless they're buying subs or hits. Uh, they will they will get in there and they're they're no one's ever gonna they will get no hits and no subs. So anyway, uh, this one's called Behind the Curve Review. Hi, Mark. I just finished Behind the Curve. Uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Nope. Nope. That's a duplicate. He sent me that email twice. I can read that one again. This one's called Flat Earth. Hi, Mark. I'm a firm believer. Our government lies their asses off to us. Firm believer. All they care about is their own skin. Having said that, if the Earth was flat, wouldn't be we be able to see the sun all the time? No. Uh, it's clearly setting. No, it's not. I haven't heard Flat Earthers touch on this topic. Yes, we have. Would love to hear back from you. Thanks, John. And John, just type... Seriously, the, the, the search strings are not that hard. Just type in Flat Earth Sun. Flat Earth Sun Explanation, Flat Earth Sunset, Flat Earth Sun Setting. Come on, you know this stuff. Just type it in. Be uh, The computers are very literal. You got to remember that. So type in exactly what you want to know. Uh, but try to try to not make it very wordy. You just type in keywords and it will show up. Oh, this one's called a Flat Earth I Told You So. Hi, Mark. I watched the Logan Paul crapumentary. <laughs> That's good. I haven't heard you say I told you so to the naysayers that opposed your decision to walk out. Yes, it may spark interest in a few people, but I'm more concerned about those that were openly upset with you. I love Patricia as well, but I'm sure it, it sure would be awesome if she would acknowledge and support what you did. And to the rest of you that thought he made a mistake, I hope you can see now that he didn't. I hope those of you that still think he's a shill can see that his walking out was not the action of a slimy, slithering coward uh, that will do anything to push their agenda. I, it took courage. A shill does not act alone, and a shill does not have courage. And that's from Donut Viper. Yeah, and thank you for that. Uh, again, the reason why I left was more of an insurance policy than anything else was that i knew he was going to troll us because that's what he does uh the kid has never been made a serious piece in his life i would love to know when he finally grows up that he actually does make a serious piece until then he's just going to get the nickels from the eighth grade boys and and do silly more and just this cyclical thing where it just keeps perpetuating itself i knew he was going to troll us because i did the research on him and even then i'm not going to take too much credit because i again i looked up his his brother jake i found his brother jake first which guess what he punks people too go figure and uh then i found out about logan and then i caught that that story at the end of 2017 uh, about the suicide forest in Japan. And I was, I was really outraged me, as you guys know, because I've had friends that committed suicide uh, and an ex-girlfriend, and, and uh, it was it was not good. I, I really, really didn't like him. Uh, so, But I was one of the few people that uh, did the research. That's all. And so when I was trying to tell others, it's like, look, this is a really, really, really bad idea. Uh, no one was listening because nobody knew who he was. Because if you're over a certain age... You don't know who he is. His demographic is really, really young. And we didn't know. So, look, I, I just, I was like, no, I'm not going to be anywhere near him. And yes, because I found out he was going up on stage, uh, in fact, right before me was even worse. It's like, really? I mean, there's a chance that I actually made, you know, this awkward moment. I'm going to have to shake hands with this guy. No, that was never going to happen. In fact, I'd be looking around for blunt instruments and figure out how a way to bludgeon that guy to death. 
because he needs to be put down eventually. It's just he's an awful, awful person. I know that sounds extreme. I was like, no, you can't say that. It's like, no, the guy's awful. I when he is sorry. This is my last statement on this, and I think I don't think we have any more. I told you so emails, but uh, he's one of those people that if all of a sudden he disappeared, the world would actually be a slightly better place. There you go. I said it. I don't care if uh, anyone complains or not. This one's called NASA's proposed mission to Neptune. Hello, Mark. Uh, we Here we go. Another space story of NASA probing space. The supposed probe would fly by Neptune's moons and stop by Venus. All that, all that at a reasonable cost of a small mission to the moon. Somebody get me the number of this NASA budget wizard. The article even comes with a sneak peek composite image of what to expect. And that's from Science Alert. Yep. P.S. Speaking of space herpes, it's stress related because, you know, all that lying is exhausting. Yeah, that's good. And then the bottom is written in Russian. Uh, and that is from I Irene Siberian. Of course, that's not her real name. Uh, she is a Russian agent who contacts me on a regular basis and actually calls into the show. I really like her. So thanks, Irene. Uh, this one's called questions about a video chat. Hi, Mark. I'm a high school student from Switzerland and I create videos on my YouTube channel. I wonder whether it's possible or not to have a video chat with you and include it in a video about flat earth and then share it with my subscribers. Would it be likely if it would, then what social network would you prefer to use? Maybe Skype or what else? Thank you in advance. And thank you for your time. Best regards. Ivan Sokolov. And you're wondering, it's like, that does not sound like a Swiss name. No, it's not. He is from Russia. And he went to Switzerland to go to school. So cool. And uh, which is interesting go to go to Switzerland to go to high school. But yeah, we ended up doing a video chat and he recorded it. And I also did an audio recording of it and put it up on my channel. If you want to listen to it, I don't know if he's released his video version yet. This one's called Mars on Earth comes to Google. Uh, it's a Fox News story. And it is Fox News. Mars on Earth comes to Google. Oh yeah, where if you want to simulate, they they sim they go figure. They found some landscapes that remind them so much of Mars. Hint, wink, nudge, uh, that you can uh, you can browse them with your Google uh, your Google browser, your Google Earth. So how's that for fun? This one's called Question After Watching Behind the Curve. Hi, Mark. I just finished watching the documentary you're in called Behind the Curve. First of all, I want to say that even though I disagree with your worldview, I like how relaxed, nice, and ultimately sympathetic you are. Going into this whole thing, and you seem to be seem to totally respect people that do not have the same worldview. That is a really beautiful trait because in most discussions, you'll find so much hate, which is not only disgusting, but not but also not productive. Yeah. But there was one thing in particular that I found to be kind of odd in the documentary. I don't know about the political discussion climate in the U.S. since I am from Germany. But the topic, flat earth or globe, really seems to divide the people on another level. I mean, the only comparable thing I found in Germany is the far left versus far right discussion. And even there, there are several shades of gray. So how come the people report that others like friends or family left them because of this? I mean, is flat earth or globe a topic th that is important to your daily life that people can't get along with others who do not share the same belief? Yeah, it is. It's very, very polarizing, extremely polarizing. Uh, like I said, I am on the globe side, but in general, I am not really interested in astronomy, etc. Because I think there are more important things that matter on a micro scale. I can just not imagine why is it so important for people that others think the same way as they do regarding that matter. It can annoy you, yeah, but my friends also annoy me sometimes and they are still my friends. So I thought I could write you for an answer. And again, just to be clear, I don't want to blame this solely on the flatter side since I don't know how all these disputes go. I just can't imagine leaving beloved people just because you are not on the same side on one specific topic that with all respect is just one out of many topics there's so much more to life after this well we'll see uh <clears throat> if you answer this on an on another way other than replying versus email please tell me where i can find the answer thank you very much much best regards from across the pond chris all right, that's going in my to-do pile, and you're asking why it's so important. Why is it so polarizing? Why do people get so bent out of shape? Okay, the easy answer is this. 
it's because the reinforcement starts out when you're so young. And I've come up with something recently, which is, all right, you're shown the globe when you are six years old, right? It's in your classroom, at least in the United States. It's, it's literally in the classroom, the corner of your classroom since you're six years old. What else is in the classroom since you're six years old? The American flag. It's up there. So the globe and the classroom, I'm sorry, the globe and the classroom, globe and the flag don't really change. I mean, yeah, the globe may move around every once in a while in the classroom, might be in this corner or that corner. But the point is they're, they're within visual range at all times for at least 12 years old, 12 years if you're going through high school. Okay, why is that important? Because we are told, think of the similarities here. The American flag, which you're willing to fight for, right? You, you're told this when you're when you're a kid, right? The American flag, it's important. This is where you live, the, Amer the America, and the globe, right there. Same thing, the globe. This is where you live. Well, what, how is a kid going to differentiate? I'm willing to fight fight for the American flag, and the, and by default, the connection is there, which is I'm also willing to fight for the globe. That's why it's polarizing. That's why people get mad because it's their home. And you're telling them that your home is not where you think it is. You might as well be telling them the American flag isn't real. Seriously, you might as well be telling them that. And you know how people are get about their, their home flags, especially in the United States. America, love it or leave it. And that's why. And so that's why it's so amazingly polarizing. It, it's just classic conditioning. 12 years of it minimum if you get through high school. And if you go into, uh, you know, uh, get your bachelor's degree or a master's or a PhD. You're you're done. I mean, there's other than mainstream telling you uh, on on tele you know on television, you're not going to believe it. So that's why it is. There, there's your answer. This one's called hundred mile hundred mile view. A high mark. I've been looking into the flat earth for the past year or so, mostly just watching different videos and thinking things over. Something that just occurred to me is in Virginia City, Nevada. There's a place that's famous for its hundred mile view. I've been to Virginia City and seen this for myself. It was before I even heard of flat earth. You can see pretty damn far. If I'm doing the calculation correctly, the furthest you can see from this point should be behind approximately 5,500 feet of curvature. Thoughts? That's from Gordon. Uh, yeah, people look this up if you get a chance, because uh, I haven't. And that is, that, that vantage point in Virginia City, Nevada, is it elevated? And if it is elevated, you have to take that into account. So when you're at this elevated point and you can see 100 miles away, is it like up on a cliffside? Is it, I mean, I'm not saying it's a mile up, but if it's hundreds of feet up, you're going to have to take that into account. So check it out if you get a chance. Moving on, this one's called Climate Change Concern. Hi, Mark. I was thinking about all the hassle and concerns about CO2 output, global warming, etc. When most of the people believe... In the globe model, apparently, flying through space at about 60,000 miles an hour and spinning at 1,000 miles an hour, I don't see why that would be a problem then because, however possible, could all the pollution CO2 gases stick to the globe? Let's let these smart scientists explain why it won't all blow away. Thanks. Keep it flat, bro. All the best, Peter. You know what? He's close. I'm not going to make fun of him because he's close. It's not the speed that would get you. It, yeah, I mean, of course, 1,000 miles an hour and 60,000 miles an hour. If you were flying around in an atmosphere, yes, of course, uh, the, the wind shear would be tremendous. It'd be off the scale. But what we're really talking about here, the bigger thing is why the vacuum of space, which is perpetual the entire time, why the vacuum of space doesn't rip off the entire atmosphere. You got to remember, uh, gravity, we're talking about this little tiny rock with a little sheen of water over it and floaty, floaty, smoky, wispy stuff, otherwise known as the atmosphere, on top of that. But how does that tiny little rock stop the immense power of the vacuum of space, which is, if you believe in space, which would be freaking infinite in nature from ripping all that off? That's the bigger question. And Because remember, it's one of the laws of thermal dynamics. How does the atmosphere stay on this globe because remember pressure needs a container pressure needs a container i'm gonna say that one more time pressure needs a container what container is uh, surrounding the earth well mainstream science says there is no container but flat earth we absolutely say there's a container or say we're in a structure a building a snow globe a planetarium a pizza box moving on this one's called earth is flat hi mark i am antonio rodriguez I don't know how to speak English well. So far, he's 
doing well. I have got a question. If the earth is flat, why are there earthquakes? Because if the earth is flat, there could be no earthquakes. And in the event that there may be earthquakes, if a gap is created, Ocean Ridge, would not the planet split? Thanks for your attention, Antonio. Uh, no, no. Plate tectonics, you can make that work on a flat disk. Easy. I mean, plate tectonics, look, anything, anything on a globe can be done on a flat, enclosed world. It can. Uh, plate tectonics, not that hard. Of course, it would have to be artificial. It would have to be part of the system. But plate tectonics, not hard to do. Not hard at all. But thank you for that. This one's called Flat Earth Diet. Okay. Uh, hey, Mark, having been forced to force fed a diet of a spherical world for most of my life, wearing the idea as one would his skin, I came to the understanding that my diet was causing me to put unnecessary weight on in parts of my intellectual stomach. <laughs> Metaphor much? Indeed, I had become intellectually obese with, you know, he's going to keep going with this, with ideas and thoughts of a spherical world that were contrary to the word of Yah. Thanks to Yahweh, I am Yahweh, uh, whatever. I am back to my healthy weight of understanding that the world is, as the scriptures say it, a circle, not a sphere. However, whenever I speak of it, before the words uttered find fertile grounds in people's hearts, they are quick to say, explain the equinoxes, eclipses, and so on. So, Brother Mark, can you provide a simple and effective explanation for me as a way of answering these people when they ask? And I would also like an effective explanation of the South Pole and Admiral Byrd's visit. Can you help? Oh, he's asking for so much stuff. Okay, uh, first off, since you're into scripture, I would highly recommend that you go to the website by Rob Skiba called testingtheglobe.com. He goes over in great detail. It's about every chapter and verse covering the topic. Look through that first. Look through that first. And then when you are done, then ask me more questions. And hopefully you are listening to this so that I don't have to email you back with testingtheglobe.com. And I recommend that for anybody, by the way. Okay, this one's called... Nope, nope. Too many coordinates in that. It's sent to a whole bunch of people. I'm not going to read that. Sorry, if it's really heavy tech math stuff, I'm not going to bore you guys because you'll be like, you can be sleeping. Okay, this one's called Space Suit Shortage. Hey, Mark, how about no space suits at all? Give them hell. I'm in North Carolina State. I'm a North Carolina State grad, master's degree. You should have seen all the hoopla surrounding this chick's space trip. A lot of my Wolfpack grad peers of mine were singing praises of one of our own heading into space. I guess you'll never get your spacesuit challenge due to the shortage. Peace, brother. That's from Paul Ryan. Uh, yeah, it's, it was tweeted by ABC News. Uh, North Carolina State graduate Christina Koch, K-O-C-H, will will become the 14th woman to perform a spacewalk, but she's not going to be doing it soon because they can't uh, find a spacesuit for her, which makes absolutely no sense and uh, appeals to my spacesuit challenge, which means that I'm not going to be getting that suit anytime soon. This one's called, I think I know how the flat earth works. Hey, Mark, the key is the moon. It's the heat recovery system. Sun radiates earth, absorbs, then radiates on 12-hour cycle to be recovered by the moon. Uh, day 12 hours, night 12 hours, yin and yang. The tides every 12 hours, in and out, equal and opposite. Earth is a ring magnet and the tor tor torodial magnetic field. He spelled that wrong. That's why I screwed it up is why the stars rotate clockwise in the south and anti-clockwise in the north. Occam's razor, it's all binary, hot, cold, equal, opposite, light, dark, radiate, absorb, one, zero. That's from Jensen. Thank you, Jensen. You know what? I like that format. I like what he was doing there. Oh, there's so many emails. That's right. Let's see, let's see how many more we can knock out here. Uh, this one's called Survival Guide, etc., uh, what's up, Mark? It's been a while. I have been busy with my new job and getting my CDL Class A for well-known company worldwide. But check out this video I made. You're in the end of it. I appreciate the shout out. Let me know if you plug my video in the next Q and A. Okay, I'm gonna click on it. Okay, the video is called NASA to deceive why I'm convinced the Earth is flat. Season 1, Episode 3, 
It's by a YouTube channel called Grant Go Forth. So it's spelled G O the number four T H. And uh, yeah, I will I will check that out if I get a chance. So uh, let me know if you plug my video next Q and A. Yep, that means I gotta put it by to do pile and write them back and say that I plugged it. This one's called. Oh, this one's good. This is a troll email. Usually I save these towards the end. It's kind of towards the end. Uh, this one's called Shameful. Uh, no, he doesn't address me by name. How effing dare you? And by the way, when I say that, he's of course swearing. Uh, how effing dare you suggest the Sandy Hook massacre was a hoax? 27 people killed, most of them six and seven years old, and you have the audacity to spew nonsense on your channel saying it was fake. I know you're incredibly ignorant about a lot, all caps, of topics, but you really should be ashamed of yourself. Jeremy Rick Richman, oh yeah, was ten times the human being you will ever be. I, I've never even heard about Jeremy Richman until now. Uh, people will continue to laugh at you and ridicule you, and you deserve it. Mark, you effing loser. And uh, the reason why he's mentioning that is because uh, on NPR, the father of Sandy Hook shooting victim dies by apparent suicide. Uh, he may have died, sure, but uh, nothing happened at Sandy Hook. All right, and why I will say this, and I, I don't want to turn this into a Sandy Hook thing, especially since we're at the end of the show, or real close to the end of this episode, which is, uh, and I wrote him back, uh, and I, when I basically, I, when I wrote him back, I sent him two things. I sent him, you guys can look this up yourself, look up Rob, Robbie Parker smiling. I sent him the official CNN cut, which is on the CNN webpage. Uh, Robbie Parker at the podium, really sad and everything, you know, talking about how his six-year-old daughter t died 24 hours earlier, right? Even though he didn't literally did not shed a tear and he looked like he got a full night's of sleep. What was interesting about that was that before CNN, there's, there's some unedited CNN footage that you can find, which people recorded, because everything sticks nowadays, which before he walked up to the podium, Robbie Parker was seen in full HD glory, uh, laughing and joking with his friends, biggest smile you ever seen on a guy. Uh, and he's got a big smile uh, just before he walked up to the podium because he didn't think it was live. He didn't think they were recording. And so he was super bright and smiling, he gets up to the podium, he says, okay, we're starting. And then he gets into character. And you can literally see him get into, I know he's not the greatest method actor in the world, getting into character, you know, I'm so sad, I'm, I'm so sad. And it's like, wow, well, how is this possible? And everybody I've ever shown that to, they understand completely, especially women. They, it's like, oh, he is lying through his freaking teeth. Robbie Parker smiling, look it up on YouTube, you can still find lots of copies of it. Uh, that's what I sent to this guy who who sent me a troll email. And I will write back to troll people every once in a while. Of course, he's not going to listen to it. And he's going to make up something. It's like, why? Well, he's stricken, so stricken by grief. That's mechanical laughter. It's like, no, no. He looks like he, I mean, 24 hours later, that guy wouldn't have slept. He wouldn't have slept for days. And he looked fine. His eyes weren't even baggy. Uh, but the other thing, which I have to mention real fa fast about Sandy Hook is, uh, and I put the challenge out there, and I I didn't originate this challenge. I stole it from somebody else, which is I will PayPal you $1,000 right now if you can show me 10 seconds of video. Video. I'm going to say it one more time. Video of any child being taken out of that school that morning. And the reason why I say that is because that operation was blown almost immediately because they forgot about one simple thing. And that was the call went out to the, the media and the media who was, there were some that drove there by cars, obviously, you know, the camera crews, but the traffic copters, which are also run by the media, they got there in two seconds. It's like, they just flew young you because know, they just flew over there, no traffic. And they had a full tank of gas because it was first thing in the morning. They just hovered and hovered and hovered and hovered. And they had their cameras fixed on the school the entire time. 600 kids, if you wanted to evacuate 600 grade schoolers, it would take hours. And you would have so much security around those kids. I mean, you know, the, the, the law enforcement, they would have had guns bristling in all directions and it would have taken forever because you don't have any shooters in there. But when the, when the helicopter showed up and it was eight in the morning, right? Show, helicopters showed up. It was like it was over. It was all, no kids to be found. Not a single kid came out of that school. 600 kids. And it was like, it was over. That was it. There was nobody. No, no, none of the emergency vehicles had their lights on. Oh, it was so frustrating. Anyway, I don't want to end on that. Uh, let's see if we can find uh, something fun to end on. I just want to throw that in there. Sandy Hook, I have a strong opinion on that. And I will put that challenge out to anybody. Seriously, $1,000 PayPal. Show me a video of law enforcement. You should have law enforcement video of, of kid under each arm. People, Kids being carried. It's just six years old. They don't weigh anything. And the, and the cops would have been jacked up on adrenaline. 
they would have carried all those kids out and they would have all been labeled as heroes and yet we didn't see any of that all right anyway this one's called uh hey mark hope you're well bud hey mate just sending an email through i sent you a voice letting you know that the book has been created to be able to re read twice oh yeah yeah i got a i got a book from a guy um that sent me his name's tony thank you tony i really enjoyed it uh and i swear i will um uh, i will do more on this later i just haven't had the time uh, this one's called Spacesuits Don't Fit. Yep, uh, I'm sure you saw this ridiculous news story, Mark. And it's about uh, why would these women not have been both properly fitted with spacesuits? Yep, were they not training prior to this event going live? I'm speechless. Things are, are getting so bad, they can't even pretend anymore. Allison from Canada. Yeah, it was about the... Yeah, she gets up there and she's not going to do a spacewalk because she doesn't have a spacesuit to take with her. It's like, because you would send somebody up without a spacesuit? for you and you wouldn't have an emergency spacesuit kind of a generic fit all spacesuit wait wow oh, such a frustrating story all right i need a fun one to end on this one's called massive flat earth disinfo campaign to discredit investigation from youtube it was sent to a bunch of people i think it's a troll one uh or maybe it's not i liked to show you both this link i think it's good news keep it up love you both peter and family all right, let's click on it real fast. It is called Massive Flat Earth Disinfo Campaign to Discredit Investigation. Oh, no, no, it's from AMTV. And he likes us, actually. Uh, and he, he published it on uh, March 21st. So the YouTube channel is called AMTV. He's got um, 650,000 subscribers. And he's uh, he seems to be leaning more towards us. And how anyone in the conspiracy world, they don't like censorship no matter where it is. And we are in that boat. So when you censor Flat Earth, you're censoring the conspiracy community, and they will rally. So good to know. Thank you for that, Peter. All right, let's end on this one. This one is called South Whidbey High School Students Interested to Interview uh, for Earth Science Class. Uh, Dear Mark Sargent, uh, this email account is run by three South Whidbey High School seniors who have been recently introduced to your work and are interest, interested in what you have to say. Although we do not currently believe the world we live in is flat, we want to keep our minds open. We're wondering if you would be willing to let us interview you for our Flat Earth Science class and possibly even come to the class and give some form of lecture. Our teacher uh, said he is open to us doing this and we feel that this would be a great opportunity to introduce your views, not necessarily just your ideas on Flat Earth, to bright young minds and open them to uh, up to new ideas. The project is due in several weeks. And although we would like to meet with you in person, we understand that you're probably extremely busy and would be perfectly happy interviewing you over the phone over Skype. We also understand if you are too busy and you don't want to be part of our project, we will continue to support your work wherever, whatever you choose to, to do. Thank you so much for even reading this email and considering our proposal to stay flat. Sincerely, uh, Adian... Aiden, Caden, Russell. And yeah, right on. I'm absolutely going to be talking to them. And of course, because South Whidbey High School is where I graduated from back all the way back in 1985. And uh, I will be speaking with, of course, it's like five miles from here. So we're going to be meeting this weekend and we're going to be shooting video for their project. And I'd be happy to do it. In fact, it was really funny because just the other day I did uh, the, all, the identical thing for Lakewood High School, which is in the same league. I, we used to play Lakewood High School back in the day. And they're on the other side. Uh, they're in the mainland. And uh, we did the same sort of thing where they just asked some great questions. They were really open-minded about things. And why not? I remember we've already got, what, a third of the 18 to 24-year-olds and the 12 to 17-year-olds. We got more of them. So great. I'll be talking to more kids because if anyone that put that's uh, sorry, that's a sticking point with me. It's like, yeah, you don't have to worry about flat earth uh, going after the kids because we already have them plain and simple. You're not gonna be able to stop us. Anyway, that's it. That's my happy ending. So uh, thank you for everybody that wrote in. And if you write in in the future, please, by all means, send your emails to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. Until next time, guys, stay flat.